Hello everyone. Uh, firstly, thank you for joining us today. I see that over 2,500 people are already connected. While the others are still joining us, I will take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Anna Lobanova and I am the Head of Marketing at Bioscience, JMBH. I will be your moderator today uh, for our first webinar out of Aesthetic Reveal series. And um, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. So Bioscience GmbH is a leading manufacturer of hyaluronic acid-based solutions for body and for the face. We are, with the 20 years of German expertise, the only holder of the C mark for the body fillers, as well as the range of facial fillers as well. Uh, we are gold sponsor of ISAPS and today together with the association we are proud to bring to you this webinar. We hope that you find this an, an experience insightful. Now I will start by briefly introducing the agenda to you. We plan to reveal in this first webinar the results of the PMCF clinical study on safety of gluteal augmentation with higher core body fillers. Uh, we will begin by our guest speakers, uh, by Dr. Nazim Cherkesh, who is the president of ISAPS, uh, then, uh, and ISAPS member, Dr. Ivar Van Henningen. We will then move on to Dr. Fan Fabio Fantosi, who will introduce the results of the study to you. Then we will move to Dr. Krabai and his patient. They will share their first-hand experience as participants of this trial. Finally, to conclude, we will have Dr. Brambilla, uh, who will explain to you the ongoing clinical studies from Bioscience GmbH. We will then finish with a Q&A session. And in that Q&A session, we, if you stay till the end, we will be able to automatically put you in the draw uh, to win Bioscience trial kit and the training session. Now, let me move on to introducing our speakers. Firstly, we will begin by the president of ISAPS, Dr. Nazim Chakesh, who is a worldwide renowned surgeon for his advancements in the plastic surgery field, and his colleague, Dr. Ivor Weinhanningen, who will uh, speak about the patient safety guidelines of ISAPS. Then we will have Dr. Fabio Fantosi introduce to you the PMCF clinical study. Dr. Fabio is a graduate of uh, University uh, of Sapienza in Rome, where he has conducted his residency as a general surgeon. He is a dedicated specialist driving the plastic surgery field in Italy and is affiliated with a lot of international organizations. Dr. Fabio has authored many medical papers. Some of them were also published in the European Journal of Plastic Surgery. So thank you, Dr. Fabio, for joining us today. Uh, Dr. Fantosi will be followed by Dr. Piero Kavai, uh, who is a graduate of University of Milan in plastic surgery. Uh, Dr. Krabai, with his 20 years of experience in the field, is frequently invited to the World Congresses as a speaker. And he has conducted also a lot of live demonstrations in different countries in the world. Uh, Dr. Krabai uh, is often invited to World Congresses. Thank you, Dr. Krabai, for attending the session. We will then have Dr. Brambilla. Uh, Dr. Brambilla is a graduate of the University of Milan, and he is a reference point for the Italian Board of Plastic Surgery and is also a member of ISAPS. As a specialist in botulin and hyaluronic acid, Dr. Brambilla is often invited to speak at the Worldwide Congresses. And with that, uh, I will start moving into the presentation mode. Please bear in mind that we will be taking questions at the end. You can submit them by um, go to webinar panel question box specifically. And if we don't have the time to answer all of your questions, we will for sure email you the answers. 
you also by staying till the end automatically will be part of a draw to win the trial kit and a training session from bioscience uh, this will be announced throughout our social media channels and the winner will be also contacted personally by email of course um, one last comment before we start the session is that we have attached our um, product order form so if you're interested in the product feel free to submit this form and we will take your order with that i would like to welcome dr nazim Cherkes and dr ivar van Hemingen to take over and continue with their presentation thank you doctors thank you so much anna Thank you so much for inviting uh, myself and uh, our board member Ivan uh, Ivar to this uh, panel, uh, this uh, webinar as speaker. And uh, I also uh, thank Bioscience for supporting and sponsoring ISAPS. We don't, do not have a disclo disclosure. I welcome all the participants to be part of ISAPS. ISAPS is the biggest international society in the world. And I would like to talk about ISAPS a, a little bit. Uh, ISAPS founded in uh, 1970, uh, and uh, it is the world leading professional body for board certified plastic surgeons. Regarded the leading global authority on aesthetic and cosmetic surgery, ISAP's threefold mission is to offer aesthetic education worldwide, to provide accurate information to public, and to promote patient safety. ISAP's membership includes over 3,000 of the world's best and most respected reconstructive and aesthetic surgeons in over 100 countries, including uh, resident members, we are close to 5,000 today. And we have a global alliance. ISAP's global alliance has 77 national uh, societies, uh, partners, and uh, the, the goal is to improve connection uh, between the societies. We have several benefits for our members. And I will talk about the benefits of our membership. Uh, if you are a member, you will have instant access to global network, and you will have a lot of friends from different countries, and you will have opportunity to meet experienced and accomplished plastic surgeons, and residents and fellows can participate in exclusive mentorship programs with experts in the field. And you, that uh, to be a member will increase your global visibility uh, because ISAP's website receives uh, around 45,000 hits per month from the colleagues, patients, and the media. And your visibility will significantly increase. And we have a wonderful extensive education program, which is our primary mission. And you will have an opportunity to attend uh, ISAP's education, uh, educational activities, which are ISAP symposia, ISAP courses, webinars. Now we are organizing uh, weekly webinars, and next year is they're going to continue. Also, we will have different uh, teaching activities. They are significantly reduced for the members, or free webinars are free for the members. So we have uh, aesthetic plastic surgery journal. You will get receive the journal free, and we have ICEPS news, ICEPS e, e magazine. These are free for ICEPS members, and uh, we provide a wide range of the insurance with significant benefits to our members. This another uh, benefit for for the members, and uh, we have ISAPS Med One. If you become a member, uh, we have member membership categories. Uh, you, you can you can use ISAPS Med One. You will have an opportunity to reach uh, many books 
and many teaching videos. And this is another membership benefit, important membership benefit. And we promote uh, safety in aesthetic plastic surgery procedures. We're gonna talk about a lot about this safety diamond. We created ISAP's safety diamond, which is procedure, patient, facility, and surgeon. Slide. And uh, for residents and fellows, membership is free. I invite all the participants who are not member of ISAPS to be member. And I say, join ISAPS today. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Nazim. Um, my name is Ivo van Heiningen, and I want to thank Anna for uh, inviting us to give a, a presentation on the guidelines. And uh, as all of you probably know, is aesthetic plastic surgery is really big business. Uh, every culture around the world looks for beauty, and we can ask ourselves, is it really important to be beautiful? And the answer is simple. Yes, it is. We really live in a visual world, we have an opinion about someone after a second and we can only make a first impression once. So the non-verbal becomes almost more important to verbal, although I will try to at least present you with some interesting uh, uh, verbal content. The importance of beauty is expressed in all sorts of magazines, in all sorts of publicity, on television, so we have to realize ourselves that there are advantages of beauty and that's why this industry exists and the advantages of beauty are that beautiful people they make more money they live longer they get more attention and they are punished less this book of nancy atkoff is really worth reading survival of the prettiest and gives you some insight of course, since we all inherently realize that this is very important, there is a natural pursuit of beauty. We want to be beautiful at all costs. So what happens? The ladies go and look for jewelry, we buy clothes, we put cosmetics on, we go to the hairdresser, if we are allowed with COVID. And of course, we look for aesthetic medical procedures, such as Botox, fillers, laser, and of course, also surgery. So we can ask ourselves, does that make aesthetic medical treatments commercial? Well, sure. I mean, it's all luxury. Governments charge VAT on it. And it's the patient, it's a client who sets the indication. And the treatments are not paid back by the health insurance anyway. So what we see in the world is that this pursuit of beauty leads to aesthetic medical treatment where the patient becomes a client the procedure becomes an interesting road to income, the surgeon can unfortunately become anyone, and a facility, well, it can be done anywhere. And this is where Fuat Nahai's safety diamond comes into scope. We have to worry a little bit, because aesthetic medical treatments, yes, they are commercial, but they are medical procedures, and they can be very dangerous. So what do we see? All of a sudden, we see complication of all sorts of fillers, complications of laser epilation by estheticians, and yeah, we have to be honest, we also see complications of surgery. So what to do? Well, I think most plastic surgeons think that patient safety is the first priority, but unfortunately, governments don't think the same way. There is no government supervision in any country on these treatments, and generally they use the excuse that they're not paid back anyway, and they're all luxury. So in that sense, it's extremely important that we think that safety is our first priority. And we have to worry about the competence control of the doctors. Uh, we see that at least there is a university training of medical specialists. Nevertheless, uh, we see that there are doctors who do breast augmentations who are not really trained to do that radiologists doing botox injections generalists doing liposuctions and even estheticians doing laser epilation so this is a, a really worldwide uh, problem 
and this absence of control uh, on the competence of the practitioner, who can do which procedure, uh, where can you do those procedures, and the result of all this is patient safety going down, and that is a big worry for ISAPs. Because of these dangers facing us, the patient starts behaving as a client, but at the same time expects all safety, as in regular healthcare. So the procedure becomes a road to income and with anyone doing anything about anywhere. So again, what to do? Well, I think we must be prepared. We must present ourselves as the protectors of patient safety, ethical, well-trained and working in a safe environment. We have to remember everybody needs to make money, but we make money with what we do, but our reputation is what we decide not to do. So these safety guidelines are extremely important and you need to be a competent well-trained specialist who checks the health of a patient and manages their expectations and then chooses the right procedure for this patient and chooses the right product not to forget and then executes that procedure in a safe and an accredited environment that is the facility so let me start with the first one Dr. Cherkis will continue with the second and the third, and I will come back to you with the fourth. Competencies. When we talk about competencies, we believe, and this is a line that is, I took from the European Standard on Aesthetic Surgery Services, that practitioners should be monospecialty surgeons. We think it's extremely important. And this is in the European Standard, EN 16372. Uh, if we look at body injectables, we have to ask ourselves, hmm, is that for surgeons or can any medical specialist do that? Can any medical doctor do that? What about dentists, nurses or other? This is extremely important that we do realize that we need at least some knowledge of anatomy to be able to do that safe. And of course, we need proper training. And that is why these kind of webinars are extremely important. Uh, the training of the doctor has a huge impact on procedure selection and on patient management. And in this sense, it is very important that we all know our limits. Uh, do you know what you don't know? I hope you do, because if you do, you're blessed. Because you can get additional training, you will realize, hmm, I better go to some experienced colleague or I do a fellowship or at least I find out how to at least not get into trouble. I hope everybody of you is aware of the Kruger-Dunning effect. Uh, the big problem is that those who can't don't know it. Uh, it's an article that was uh, written by Kruger and Dunning showing that children in a class at the beginning of the year, the best children would always think that they would have lower results and the worst would always think that they would have higher results. So they were not aware of what they didn't know. So if you don't know what you don't know, well, you're on your way to, to disaster. So we have to really be very honest with ourselves for the sake of our patient. After all, it's a huge responsibility. We as surgeons decide what sort of procedure uh, we can do on a particular patient and in what environment we do that. So we at ICEPS believe that there are minimal requirements. I mean, a surgeon should be a board certified, prefer be plastic surgeon uh, registered in the country of practice and we do think we should subscribe to a code of ethics and work in an accredited facility i will leave the next item to dr Cherkis. so in the patient management Consultation is, is very important and to understand uh, what the expectations of the patient is very important. And previous medical history, uh, previous aesthetic surgical history and physical exam examination and uh, what the patient needs uh, and diagnosis and uh, treatment options should be consulted with the patient. Also, it is very important to understand the expectations of the patient. Sometimes it's more difficult than doing a procedure. You can do a right procedure on a wrong patient, or you can do a wrong procedure on a right patient, and uh, you have to learn uh, from your gut feeling. 
And uh, management and communication with the patient is important and we must be ethical. This should be much more important than on the economic considerations. And patient safety is the most important issue in, uh, in the surgical treatments. Slide, please. So make sure you have a healthy patient with reasonable expectations that you feel you can meet. And then choose the right procedure for these patients and use right product. After selecting the right patient, you choose the right procedure for the patient, keeping associated risk levels in mind. The higher the risk level, the more careful the selection the process. So risk levels are is categorized uh, according to European standards. A is minimal risk, B, B impairment, C disability, D handicap, and E that. So, but sometimes uh, in this uh, scale, as you can see in this scale, pre fat grafting uh, to gluteal area is risk level uh, is uh, determined as C, which disability, but actually today um, many patients die, is dying because of the wrong application of the fat grafting to the gluteal region. So we have to consider these issues uh, according to our knowledge and expertise. So aesthetic surgical procedures are su subject to change for exact definition of procedures peer-reviewed peer journals, European and national competent organization and authorities should be consulted. And every day new product procedures and new products are coming up. We must follow product st standards and CE marking is very important uh, in, in our applications. Procedures must be well researched and published in peer-reviewed peer quality medical journals. So I said, and, sorry, Nazim, my yes. turn again. So we okay. have to follow uh, the, the the safety guidelines. So the last uh, uh, issue was uh, the facility. Now we have to execute procedures in a safe and accredited environment. Now, what is the facility? You know, it can be an office where we do a consultation or an exam room in a private clinic. You know, we can have an operating area in a surgery center. They only have an operating area. A hospital uh, is even more extensive. But basically, a facility is an area where you carry out a procedure. And if we ask ourselves what type of rooms exist, I think we can determine that there are three types of rooms, exam rooms, procedure rooms, and operating rooms. Of course, then we have to look at the procedure. What is the procedure? Is it only a filler uh, and only a toxin? Is it only a small injection that we can just clean and do? Or is it more extensive? Uh, or is it uh, an extensive operation? And what anesthesia do we use? Don't we use any anesthesia? Is it only local? Is it general anesthesia or is it sedation? If we look at facility control, and I can look at the Belgium situation because I know that best. If we look at the hospital, it's really very strict. You know, the government checks the buildings, the materials, they have checklists, they check whether they are accredited. But if we look at private clinics, there's no controls. I mean, I opened in 2006 and I got accredited because I decided to do that. And I went to the American Association of Accreditation of Ambulatory Surgery Facilities because there simply isn't any uh, uh, organization doing that in my country. So I decided for myself, but I had no government control ever since then. So in, in over 12, 14 years being open, nobody checked. So this is a situation that ICEPS has recognized. So we've taken the opportunity and I worked with Ozan Sozer on guidelines 
for non-hospital settings, but we want to uh, apply that to all circumstances, and this is only to non-hospital settings. We believe that these guidelines are the absolute basic that everybody needs to have. And for now, they're voluntary for ISAPS members, but we, we recommend that in the future they will be mandatory, and we recommend that for everybody. What are these ISAPS facility accreditation guidelines based on? Well, they've been initiated, uh, initiated starting from the uh, safety diamond that you saw, and they're based on these two European standards and on the Quad ASF accreditation manual. And basically, the guidelines exist of, of general requirements, medical records, quality improvement, personnel and staff requirements, operating area, post anesthesia and operative care units, and the sterilization. What, is, what does that entail? Well, you know, it means that you need to have a proper infrastructure. Uh, you need a consultation room, you need a waiting area, and you need an operating room, a recovery room, and you have to look at your equipment and make sure that that equipment is correct. And of course, you need lots and lots and lots of protocols. None of us really like these protocols, not to write them. But I think if you are a safe doctor, you look at each one of them, and I think you will agree that if you were a patient, you would hope that your clinic will have taken care of these protocols and at least have thought about the consequences of these protocols. We at ISEPS, we looked at all our members in the world, and we have members in 108 countries. And we found out that uh, from 57 countries, we got information and only 39 of them have accredited accreditation agencies and 18 do not. So that's 32%. So if you work in a hospital, generally that will be checked, you will be okay. If you work in an accredited surgery facility, you're probably also okay. But if not, or there is no accreditation in your, in your country, then you have to do it yourself. So we welcome you to download these facility uh, um, guidelines that we have. We all need to focus on patient safety. We have to be ethical. We need to be well-trained and work in a cyber environment. So right now we're busy training inspectors and we hope soon to be able to get an official ISEP Scored ASF accreditation stamp. I'll leave the conclusion to our president. Thank you so much, Ivar. Uh, first, we have to remember that we are a doctor first and we must be ethical. And avoid patients with unrealistic expectations is important, avoidance of patients. And we have to know our limits and we have to train ourselves and we have to follow ISAP's patient safety guidelines, which are competent, well-trained specialists. We have to improve our knowledge and our skills. We have to choose the patient in good health and realistic expectations, and we have to use safe and accredit clinic and choose right, right procedure for the patient. And work in an accredited facility, follow ISAP's global accreditation guidelines. You can download it from www.isaps.org, that guidelines and comply with the European Standards Aesthetic Surgery Services, EN 16.372, and for aesthetic medical procedures, EN 16.844. And just do it for your patients. Thank you so much. If you have questions, we are happy to answer. Thank you very much, Dr. Nazim and Dr. Ivor. Uh, it is really important information about safety, and 
On that note, we are going to move into the presentation of Dr. Fantozzi, which will speak about clinical study about safety of glottal augmentation with body fillers. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for the, the president, doctor, for the safe guidelines. And uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, would you like, I have a discussion with clients uh, and uh, because uh, I am a speaker and I want to share for bioscience, I want to share with you all my experience, scientific experience with bioscience today. And so, uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, webinar, uh, we talk about uh, gluteal augmentation with the hyaluronic acid, and uh, we, I will explain uh, the the last clinical trial. And uh, my presentation is four sections. The first part uh, we talk about uh, gluteal augmentation and uh, surgical and not surgical uh, procedure. The second part uh, is uh, the bioscience clinical trial. And the third part uh, is uh, the uh, we talk about certifications uh, about the YARCORP. And uh, we finally talk about uh, the cases and so the results before and after. And so in the gluteal augmentation uh, are really important, uh, you know, uh, treatment now because uh, is really increasing. And uh, when we increase uh, the, the volume of the gluteus, we increase uh, the femininity and the sensuality of the body. Um, in the last, uh, uh, from uh, since uh, 2014, uh, from uh, some days uh, from the Aesthetic Society of Plastic Surgery, increase the gluteal augmentation procedure of 90%. And uh, Imagine that every 30 minutes of every day we have a buttock procedure. And so it's very popular treatment. It has very high media attention because it's really important the care of the body in the third millennium. Imagine that we care a lot about the, the health of our body, but too, we care over the beauty too of the body. And so it's increasing uh, treatment about uh, diet, alimentation, uh, and uh, loss, uh, weight loss, uh, like uh, post bariatric surgery is, are increasing in the last 20 years. And uh, for this reason, it is really important that uh, the, when we change, when we reshaping the body, in particular the, uh, the gluteus, it's important that uh, we be very advanced uh, treatment uh, procedure and uh, very safe. And uh, we maintain the result uh, for the time, therefore it's very important. And we talk about the gluteal segmentation and uh, we have uh, three, um, uh, three type of augmentation of the glucose. First of all, uh, for, uh, with uh, surgical treatment, uh, with uh, positioning of uh, implants, that technique uh, is uh, beginning from uh, the, in the end of the 90s, from Brazil, from Mexico, and uh, it's, very, it's very great surgery. Only, the only problem that uh, um, the, the community of plastic surgeon only a little part uh, perform uh, this type of surgery is uh, is really important uh, experience in this field and uh, and we have uh, we can have some uh, complication and that uh, is very linked with implants uh, the position the experience of the surgeon the type of patient and so is not uh, very safe. Uh, safe treatment, uh, surgical treatment, uh, if you are not experienced in this sense uh, like doctor and uh, but uh, uh, we discuss uh, later about uh, the complications. And so another, another type of, uh, of augmentation, glutose augmentation is uh, fat grafting. Fat grafting is really interesting because we can take the fat from flanks, from uh, the leg 
and uh, we can position, uh, we can uh, put the uh, transfer in, uh, in the glucose. That is very interesting procedure and we have very great result, but uh, is not possible to perform this, uh, this treatment in a skinny patient because we have not fat. And is, uh, there is a very open discussion now where is uh, um, about uh, the thromboembolism. And so we talk later about that. And we arrive finally in another type of, uh, of augmentation that is with uh, filler. We know from the past that we used uh, permanent filler. Permanent filler was a disaster of a surgery in general, in plastic surgery and aesthetic surgery, because now is a void because we have migration, we have infection, we have inflammation, we have many, many necrosis, we have many, many complications. But uh, filler um, like hyaluronic acid is different because it's not permanent during um, for one year. And uh, uh, we have a very large experience that uh, hyaluronic acid for the face. In the last 20 years, we had a very great resource. But uh, now we start a new cycle of hyaluronic acid for the, for the body, in particular for a gluteal augmentation. So bioscience uh, was uh, 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 to prepare a different hyaluronic acid, more stable, with the molecular weight uh, more important. And so we arrive at molecular weight to 500 Dalton. If you compare with the hyaluronic acid for the face, that is 200 Dalton normally. That is more stable and is perfect, you know, to augmentation of the glutes. And so now uh, we arrive in the point, what is the ideal procedure? And so ideal procedure, there are many publications about that. And so imagine it. we have doctors, plastic surgeon, we have a patient, and so we arrive in the point. And so it's better to use uh, implants, it's better to use uh, uh, fat grafting, it's better to use filler. And so, and so now we try also to explain in some points only to uh, find the, the, the right solution. I think there is uh, any treatment as uh, the ideal, uh, ideal uh, patient. And so it's a really important examination of the patient. And so to evaluation about the complications, for example, when we put uh, a surgical treatment, and so when you use uh, implants, we have uh, the normal problem of the implants. And so we, the implants can produce uh, inflammation uh, with the tissue, and so like seroma, we can move uh, maybe because uh, wall malposition of the implants, we can have some problem. And so that uh, is, is a surgery, and so, uh, is um, is really important, uh, you know, for the surgeon to immediately understand uh, uh, if is uh, this uh, treatment is uh, is the best for the patient. Like uh, when you, we use uh, a fat implant, a fat uh, fat uh, fat uh, tissue in a fat transfer. And so when we produce a gluteal fragmentation with fat, the fat tissue we can produce some problems. Sometimes uh, the reshaping, and so we can have uh, contour deformities. And uh, we arrive at the point, uh, you know, it's very famous Brazilian back lift. Yes, very famous in the last 10 years. It was a very amazing uh, uh, technique uh, with uh, many plastic surgeons like to do Brazilian back lift and so with fat transfer. And uh, we now uh, start a new cycle of the fat transfer because in the last two years uh, we have uh, a discussion uh, and a contraindication, something about the embolism, fat embolism that can, can produce this treatment. Uh, and so uh, this treatment uh, is a good treatment, but you need a regulation, will, is important to uh, uh, study very well the patient because we can arrive in a complication, a very serious complication. And uh, finally, we arrive in our, in our idea, like, like 
could be possible make uh, a gluten augmentation. And so we we enter in the bioscience clinic, clinical trial. Remember that uh, bioscience produce two type of uh, hyaluronic acid for the body. This is the Yacorp LMLF, MLF1 and MLF2. These two difference because we have difference in particular molecular weight. One is very is between 200 and 300. A2 is more stable, arrive to 500 of molecular molecular weight thousand. And the objective of the trial was evaluation very well about the, the patient. And so the evaluation was about the, uh, say the safety and the satisfaction. And uh, to analyze the, uh, the side effects, the pain, the satisfaction of the patient and the doctor too. And uh, we, in this clinical trial, was uh, three uh, indicators. In the beginning, it was investigation sites, it was uh, three sites, four sites, duration, uh, and so was about uh, um, the study immediately after the treatment. The step two was uh, after, uh, from the fourth day to 17 days after the treatment. Another um, uh, follow-up was uh, the third follow-up uh, from uh, the third month for to the six months. In uh, in uh, the last one, uh, the number of the patient was uh, 35. And so these uh, three outcome line that was initially uh, patient selection, method of injection, method of analysis, and uh, um, to to arrive uh, in uh, to, 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 to complete the trial uh, timeline. And so the patient selection was uh, 35 uh, patients uh, for investigation science sites. And uh, before to participate in this clinical trial, there was uh, um, necessary a written consent to participate in this trial. And uh, in this patient, we had uh, nine smokers and 16 uh, physically active patients, a 10 patients with prior aesthetic interventions. Uh, interesting that uh, about the method of injection, that's uh, the amount of uh, injection was between 85 and 42 ml of a product. We remember that this product has a very uh, special cross-linking technology. We use the uh, we use the uh, needle of um, uh, 18 gauge, normal for 33 patients, and a needle of uh, uh, of um, uh, 22 gauge in two patients. I use the local local anesthesia. And uh, the injection amount uh, and uh, was uh, uh, between 85 and 42, and uh, was um, the, the, the site that the part in the center of the gluteal was the part that we used uh, more. And we uh, we only only to explain the method of analysis that was uh, uh, register recorded every day the side effect. Uh, from uh, the day of injection, and uh, was uh, uh, was a scale uh, of um, uh, of uh, investigation uh, after the second week uh, and after three months uh, until six months. And uh, in the reality, the the real side effect that uh, we have seen uh, was pain scale was pain, and uh, we make a scale uh, from one to 10 of the pain scale for the for the patient. Uh, the patient was uh, in reality the, the, the most important side effect uh, and uh, that uh, uh, this pain uh, is uh, is immediately after the, the treatment. Uh, it could be possible that the, as the pain, the patient, the gluteus uh, for the first uh, two days 
and the range uh, that we we talking about the range uh, of uh, of the, the pain uh, from the one to eight was uh, around two or four, and uh, immediately uh, the side side effect uh, is uh, is uh, was was pain in seven patient and uh, in one patient was uh, hematoma. We in af immediately after the injection, uh, no rash, no induration, no other other side effect. Uh, was only a hematoma because they take a, a vessel uh, only in in, in one, one patient, and uh, we not record a typical uh, something in the very adverse uh, side effect. And uh, immediately the the side effect was pain. And so this pain uh, is uh, the, the, the reason of the pain that because we increase uh, with volume the glutes is like when you put uh, implants in, in, in the breast. And so the, the, the depression of the new volume of the hyaluronic acid can produce uh, immediately uh, in, in the first days uh, pain. But this pain after when we analyze the patient after in the second week uh, after uh, from uh, uh, after the first week to 14 days uh, we see that uh, is uh, this pain uh, is not uh, is, is, is not present anymore we have in nine patients uh, we had uh, swelling in six patients uh, reddening in uh, four patients itching in duration in two patients hypersensitivity in, sensitivity in one patient and uh, only one patient uh, was continuous a little pain of the gluteus. We have not, we, we haven't, uh, no rash, no hematoma, and uh, not something of severe, you know, uh, uh, severe uh, complication. And then we, don't, we didn't use, uh, you know, the, the, some medicine to treat. After three months, uh, between the period three months and six months, in the reality, uh, side effect practically none. Only one case of mild swelling, and uh, in in the reality, we have not reported uh, extrusion of, uh, of 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 the hyaluronic acid, no infection, no reaction, no granuloma, and so none of these complication. And so, if we see these. Uh, this graphic about the side effect in the reality we have only you know uh, we have very very low side side effect after the treatment the satisfaction of the patient is really high when we treat the gluteal augmentation in the in the center we have in the side three and so the patient is really happy about the result like the doctor too because uh, the doctor can see the good augmentation very easy only with injection of the uh, the hyaluronic case in, in the office and so no surgical treatment very fast uh, very safe if uh, you maintain the right amount of hyaluronic case then you don't go over you know overdose of amount in the conclusion in this trial uh, we are uh, in these uh, patient 35 patient in reality we had uh, practically a sense of important side effect. In the reality, only pain in the beginning, but that is natural because you increase, you know, uh, the volume of the, in, in the gluteus, and so you have a like a response, a little bit of the pain. And in this in investigation, we can, uh, we can uh, confirm that uh, the, the product is really safe if you use in the right uh, sense and so that is uh, is a treatment that is possible to do in the office but if you compare with the hyaluronic as in the face is really important the asepsia and so clean very well with the soap the part of the gluteus where you make the injection you use the globe you use uh, very uh, very is like you imagine that you stay in the office but it's like operating room and so you are surgeon you are doctor and so clean very well everything you prepare well because it's injection 
of uh, uronic acid that is like in plants and so it's important to maintain uh, you know very clean the parts and uh, we remember about the certification of the uh, your corp uh, is uh, CE, uh, C certification uh, the product is uh, and so is really safe and so as all the standard for uh, a critical product that we can use in the European uh, community. We remember that uh, these, uh, we have a renovation until May 2024 with the uh, CE mark. We have uh, ISO um, uh, mark II and uh, the product uh, of a bioscience about the uronic case is not only for the body but uh, for the face. Uh, two, we remember that this treatment is really uh, quick. Uh, is it possible to do in the office? Is sure is important that your office has, you know, maintain, you know, the sterility of your act. That is important because you put a amount of hyaluronic acid that is between 50 or 80 ml of a product it is important that uh, you prepare the patient you may control like as after one week after three months or to be sure about all the post-op of the patient and uh, and uh, we remember that the product are two type of product is mlfe one for the body that is important two things that is um, the cross link that is NAHA and is important the molecular weight in in uh, IL um, in uh, in MLF1 the weight is between 203 and 350 daltons and MLF2 is arrived to 500 daltons so is more stable for this reason can maintain uh, the presence of hyaluronic acid in the body for one year that is really important to maintain the result and so the patient are really satisfied and so we um, talk about the gluteal augmentation and we have very good uh, result with the uh, hyaluronic acid but hyaluronic acid we can use it for the hands to cover the veins and the tendons in the dorsum, in the hands dorsum, and we can use in the legs sometimes when you make a liposuction, maybe you have a little deformities or something after liposuction, and so with MLF1 we can treat these deformities, we can treat in some cases the umbilicus when in person that use the piercing, or we can use in calves or in other deformity of, of the leg. And uh, we remember that uh, the bioscience uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, um, has a very high technology in, uh, in, uh, in the production of the hyaluronic acid, has very large experience in this field, and uh, we uh, can uh, um, we can have a very scientific support from a big company about this 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 product, and only to only to only to uh, conclude with about the result. Um, that's you can see the video that only to resume some characteristic of the this hyaluronic. Uh, acid, uh, we can pass after that uh, about, uh, you know, like that's it's very important the position uh, when you make uh, in this uh, type of uh, uh, make injection, you stay in uh, under the derma, you normally is the best place uh, is uh, near in, 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 in the fat tissue uh, over the, the muscles. And uh, we conclude uh, about the results. The results uh, we we can show some results of before and after. That's result uh, you can do it in your office. Uh, is uh, very practical because 
is very common that uh, plastic surgeon uh, sometimes uh, uh, when you talk with the patient say okay uh, for I think that uh, we can do uh, good augmentation but uh, I need to go in the operating room and so many patients say okay doctor but I don't like uh, operating room I I worry and so uh, I would like to do something in the office if it's possible. And with this year working on ACD, we can do this performance. We can have a result. We can have in the office, or you do the year one case. It's really important to understand exactly you know, the limit of this, uh, uh, this type of augmentation. But when you achieve the experience, uh, to treat well uh, these um, the glutes with this uh, product, uh, we can have very amazing results. And so, thank you very much for your for your assistance. Uh, and uh, and uh, I hope for any question we are I am ready to answer. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Pantosi, for this very informative session. Now, if I could ask the participants of the webinar to please pay attention to the two live polls that you should see on your screens about now. Once you have filled those, we will proceed on with the agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your opinion with us. Thanks. So, moving on, we will hear from Dr. Krabai and his patient who will share their first-hand experience in the trial. Good afternoon. Uh, I wish to thank you, Joanna, and all um, the organization. I'm uh, Dr. Pierre Kabai, plastic surgeon. I'm working in Lyons. I was uh, one of the four doctors invited to be part of um, uh, the clinical trial conducted uh, by Bioscience. And I have, uh, since Ray, I'm using um, uh, the higher Corp uh, and the Bioscience product for the body since uh, six years, and I develop an experience in uh, the right technique of infiltration. The trial was, as uh, Dr. Fantozzi mentioned earlier, uh, for investigation of uh, side effects as well the satisfaction rate of the patient and physician on gluteal augmentation, especially with the product that is Hyacorp MLF2. Um, I was pleased to be part of this research as I'm thinking since a long time that the body fillers really could have a potential in the future and in body volume augmentation and the purpose of this research was to have a strong basis to proceed on one more uh, other more specific trials then going on uh, the details for this type of uh, study i made investigation um, uh, i was the site one and i made investigation from the patient one to patient 11 uh, on consenting all this patient and were part of this site. Five patients were from Milan and six patients were from Dubai. The oldest one uh, was 49 years old and the younger one was 20 years. The average was 35 years old. Uh, 
most of my patients uh, didn't have before uh, an intervention, aesthetic intervention. Just three of them had other intervention like uh, liposuction of the tides, rhinoplasty, and uh, um, uh, masto, uh, mastoplasty. Uh, no one of them, of course, had uh, any potentially cause uh, an issue with the, with the hyaluronic acid injection. I was able to inspect all the patients based on assessment on, on the quantity um, that was determined, and the maximum amount in the session was uh, 60, uh, 60 uh, cc, 30-30 uh, each side, and the maximum it has been 120 cc, 60-60 uh, each side. And after the, um, after the injection of hyaluronic uh, acid, I observed and recorded the immediate reaction that occurred. Uh, going on the technical detail, following the protocols that uh, before has been, has been um, clearly explained, I, I treated with a beta in the part to be uh, injected. Then I used the S18 cannula. Uh, I rather uh, rarely use the 22 cannula. I didn't use uh, local infiltration because I, I'm thinking that uh, anesthesia can spread the, do, uh, the product and uh, make its dilution. So it, it maybe it can create less stability and make uh, probably uh, the product can even have a migration rate uh, higher. Then I only assessed the local anesthesia in the place where I, I, I started to inject, so in the place where I uh, put the cannula. Then I infiltrated in the subcutaneous tissue, uh, deep uh, in the deep subcutaneous tissue, uh, but over the fascia, muscularis fascia. And then I, after that, I spread the product and message uh, all the part to uh, to create a, a, a layer that has been uh, completely uh, even in all the part of the, the, the side that I treated. Then uh, I usually tape the part, uh, the side, uh, to keep more stable uh, the product and I tape uh, under the skin. And I don't do, of course, any kind of put any kind of stitches in the entry point. In um, this uh, in this research, I didn't assess any uh, any kind of uh, antibiotic, and I suggested in case the patient to take after the treatment uh, ibuprofen 600 milligram and. Uh, and in case to inform the operator to form me in case uh, if she had any other problem. For the results, I evaluated immediately the, the patient and we checked uh, like uh, me and the other and the other uh, the other uh, surgeon in charge. We checked the patient in all the time from the first day to the seventh day after the treatment. And uh, personally, I only I only had uh, uh, observed the one side effect that has been a uh, slight hematoma that after uh, two weeks has been recovered easily. Then uh, I other other side effects like uh, before was mentioned by uh, Dr. Fantozzi wasn't present uh, only. Uh, the one that I observed more was itching and redness in the first seven, 10 days. Uh, after that, uh, I didn't observe any rash, any swelling, duration, and I didn't uh, observe the, any, any lump appearing. Um, even um, the other the pain, uh, as, I, as we, are, uh, we are considering the pain scale from one to 10, was not so high because the highest I recorded was four and the less I recorded was two. This is what's coming because the technique I use is was very light. I didn't push too much. I didn't have use too much strength and I didn't, uh, I did, I was very soft in the injection. And after 15 days, in any case, I didn't observe any other uh, side effects like redness or, or 
other uh, other problems. During the three six months of a follow up, uh, the patient of my sites uh, they didn't have any delay uh, side effect. Uh, after four months of the treatment, uh, the patient demonstrated stable uh, performance with no product loss reported. And as of the treatment, I'm thinking that technique and the skill of the operator and the level of infiltration and accuracy are very important. Moreover, the nature and the safety of the product and the CA certified uh, give me the uh, and the standard uh, and the standards give me a successful result and keep me in safety uh, in safety uh, in safety position. And during this time, I also recorded the satisfaction of the patient uh, with the treatment. Most of my patients were satisfied with results. Two of them uh, rating uh, it as very good, five of them rating it as good, and four of them slightly improved. No one of them uh, reported no visible improvement. I also found the procedure effective, and most of my rating rated very good and the good for the result demonstrated uh, by my patient. As a physician, I'm very satisfied of the procedure, and I didn't find in this year any major complication using I, I, I'm using iCorp MLF2 and other body filler, since at the time is uh, good to have, is, uh, is uh, important to give the right indication. Hi, my name is Ellen and I took part in the higher core body filler trial for the butt augmentation about two to three months ago now. So I'm just here to share my experience with you. Um, the butt augmentation is something that I wanted to try for a while now, but after looking into surgery, um, it was a bit evasive and a bit extreme for me. So when this opportunity came along with higher corp, I jumped to the chance and as a team mark certified I knew I'd be in safe hands. So I met Dr Krabby who was doing the procedure and he took me through step by step, very informative, answered all my questions regarding the actual treatment itself, the after effects and then the actual final result. So I was quite comfortable then to go ahead. Um, so on the day, um, after the anaesthetic, it was fine, it didn't hurt at all during the procedure. Um, I was walked through it as well, so I knew exactly what was happening step by step. Um, and then afterwards, there was no pain at first, um, I was fine. I drove home from the clinic um, and yeah. It was great. I actually had skinny jeans on for some reason, but yeah, there was nothing. I just, it was, it was fine. And then after about, about what, two hours or so, there's a bit of swelling. Um, and at first it looks quite wide and high at the back kind of thing. Not, not too much. As I said, I was able to get my normal clothes on. Um, but it was just, I think it was just a swelling. Um, and then it was a bit painful and started getting a bit painful a few hours after. And there was redness um, where the actual needle had gone in and also it felt like I could feel the filler. Um, it was quite hard to touch in the areas, um, but again, fine. I had to sleep on my front um, and yeah, I went to work the next day and was able to move no fine just just a little bit of pain but nothing not an extreme able to sit down all day and work um and that continued for about two to three days and then i noticed the swelling started disappearing um and the redness went the bruises started to fade um after about day seven i noticed that it was a lot softer to touch but it was still firm like it's it's made the butt area firm but it was soft it was like natural soft um so that was pleased with um and then yeah it just continued to get better and better so the swelling went down the shape was great it looked really natural 
and I had like hip dips um, and they were just filled out nicely so I just think it's great now it looks like an hourglass figure um, just exactly what I wanted um, definitely recommend it and I, I'd do it again in fact when the swelling went down I was like oh I want more so yeah get gets a bit addictive um, but yeah um, I think it, it was great great procedure and no downtime time sorry um, so yeah, I'd like to thank Bioscience and Dr. Crabby for everything and I'll definitely be back in the future to see you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, doctor and the patient for sharing their first-hand experiences. With that, we will move on to Dr. Brambilla, who will introduce the ongoing studies uh, from Bioscience. Good morning to everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk. It's such an interesting symposium organized by ISOPS, uh, such a um, good organization. So my talk will be on body contouring, will be uh, new system, new devices that are on the market, trying to focus on safety and efficacy. Um, we, we know from data that the demand of Botox augmentation and in general body reshaping is increasing through the years. And we know that fat graft, gluteal implants and composite techniques are the golden standard for us plastic surgeons. We cannot forget on the other side that not all patients are suitable for aesthetic surgery. Many of them ask for something that is less invasive, so aesthetic, non-surgical aesthetic procedures. So the global trend goes to non-surgical or to min minor invasivity uh, procedures. So the first question is fat graft and body filler can compete and the answer obviously in my mind is no because there are different arrows for different targets. So in some cases we have, we can make our choice on a more invasive and stable procedure. In other cases, for minor cases, we may choose something that is non-invasive. Um, the past, uh, uronic acid for body contouring is not something new. In the past, we had a, a very good product, I think, that was Macrolane. It was for, on the market for several years and there were very interesting uh, publication about that with very good board of doctors with very good name involved in the study of the product. And the, um, the papers that were published were uh, encouraging about the, about the data. And we, we get to a certain point when Macrolane was took out of the market. And the reason, and those are my personal opinion, because I know the product, it was mainly because of the inappropriate use by many doctors around the world of a, a very cohesive gel in, in um, body places where it had, had not to be implanted. It means in the face, for example. And on the other side, the inappropriate use of the product into the breast because into the breast is very tricky and it gives many difficulties for breast diagnosis. So it was not the appropriate part of the body to inject it. And that guided the Galderma Cumed to uh, move it away from the market in order not to have a problem. So it was not a problem of the product itself, but I think that it was a problem of misindications. The present, the present is that we have now on the market uh, a uronic acid that is suitable for body augmentation. We are talking mainly on uh, the um, gluteus. But there are four key points that are patient selections, product rheology, knowledge of anatomy and the proper technique, of course. About product rheology, um, HA with the concentration and the molecular weight and the cross-linking gives uh, some specific uh, rheology, rheological characteristics that are viscosity, elasticity, and cohesivity, and that 
changes so dramatically from one product to the other. So one product is suitable to be implanted in one part of the body and another one in another one. Uh, higher products, for example, have different ranges of viscosity and elasticity, so we have to choose the right one for the right part of the body. Uh, technique, then, uh, even this changes dramatically the, um, the, the result. For example, a fan technique versus a bolus technique are completely different, so we have to know and to understand the technique, as well as the quantity of the product to be injected. About anatomical knowledge, Dr. Fantosi already talked about that, but I want to struggle that anatomy is at the base of safety. Nevertheless, the quality of the product, I mean, we, we, we may have uh, a thromboembolic uh, problem uh, despite the fact that we are using fat or hyaluronic acid. We, so um, we have to know exactly, exactly the area where we are injecting, avoiding all the risky areas, and that can be done just with the um, with the proper training of doctors performing the procedure. Future. Um, we already heard about uh, we already heard about the studies that has been published previously and is is in printing right now. But this, we thought that was not enough in order to give credibility to the product and to get more details about the product. So what we did is to start with a new study that now is ongoing on uh, um, the use of Hyacorp in, uh, in the gluteal area. Um, this is a study that it enrolled 80 patients with seven investigators and it will last one year with the four stages um, with the four stages uh, monitoring of the cases and they will be evaluated in at one three six twelve months with a subjective evaluation by psychological uh, scores um, recognized by the literature of course by the report of all complications and by the objective evaluation via um, echography uh, with a high standard uh, system of the detection with a 3d photography and with the volume measuring via a 3d imaging all that will help us to understand better uh, the safety and the efficacy of the product and we really thought that that was mandatory even because Hyacorp is a product that is on the market since so many years, we know that has been sold for years and tons of hyaluronic acid of Hyacorp was sold with really, really little report of side effects. But we needed a, a more complete study in order to uh, give credibility to the product. Thanks for your attention. I, 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 I hope to uh to have to be clear on what is said thank you thank you very much dr grambilla for sharing your insight at this point we will be opening for questions for the time's sake we will not be able to take all of them but we will answer to all of those questions you submit by email so let's start with the first questions So, uh, first questions are in, and the first one is for Dr. Krabai. This is from Dr. Hernandez from Mexico, and the question is, what quantity of product do you usually inject for effective results? Okay, the maximum amount of I'm using uh, uh, actually is uh, is a ten uh, is a ten syringe per side in the bottom. Does it mean one hundred side? Uh, this is what because I don't want to exceed too much uh, because of the reactivity can be uh, the reaction of the patient can be uh, more uh, present uh, as much as you inject. 
uh, but uh, the less quantity of product I use an inject to have a uh, to have a, a, an evident and to have a, a good result and just to show the result is three syringe each side does it mean 30 uh, 30 cc each side Thank you, Dr. Kravai. So the second question is for Dr. Bramdila uh, from Dr. Draganov from Bulgaria. And um, the question is, I am satisfied with the fat grafting, so why would I want to use your product? Well, I think that is not my product, it's a bioscience product. <laughs> what I think is that there are patients that are suitable for a minor uh, procedure uh, and they want to have a, a small enhancement of the projection of the gluteal area, for example, and those are perfect patients. They come in, they go out. Uh, and I, I think that this is already a good answer. I mean, I, I don't think that this is a is the good product for big enhancement, big volumes, but for small volumes and details, definitely yes. Um, thank you, doctor. And I have another one for you as well, which is what is different between MLF2 product and Sculptra for buttock augmentation? I didn't hear your question. Um, the question was, what is different between MLF2 and Sculptra for buttock augmentation? Are two different products with, with you, you cannot compare. I mean, we, we are talking about two different products with uh, different principles inside uh, and it, everything is different. I mean, you cannot compare the, the, the quality of um, such different products. I mean, we are talking about different things. Thank you, doctor. Uh, now, the last question I have is from Saudi Arabia, from Dr. Mubarak. Can we inject MLF1 or MLF2 in the face? So I guess that question is for me. The answer is no. These are counterindicated to inject in the face because of the white particle volumes. So these are only for body augmentation, not for the face. Thank you. Now, I would like to conclude today's session. Thank you very much for the panelists, doctors, as well for the ISEPS members. We are gold sponsor of ISEPS and really are pro proud to have brought this webinar to you uh, together with the association. And of course, thank you to all the attendees. Uh, we will be getting back to you with the questions that you have submitted. Also, as I mentioned in the beginning, for those of you who have stayed till the end, you will be automatically entering the draw and you will have a chance of winning other, either a trial pack and the training from bioscience. The winner will be uh, highlighted on all of our social media and also will receive a personal email. So stay tuned for that. Um, now, after this, you will receive an email with a small survey. We hope that you would be able to fill that survey and share with us your feedback. We would really appreciate it. With this, I would like to announce that this first webinar out of Aesthetic Reveal series is finishing, but we are looking forward to see you again uh, for the next webinar of the series, which will be held on the 21st of November. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a great day.